Hi, I'm John Paul from Power by Nature. Now today we are obviously going to be talking about some solar panels that I've now bought. Now the whole idea of what I want to do is I want to set up a solar energy charging station to kind of phrase. The whole idea is I'm not going to be running a specific device off for this is I want to run as many devices as possible or to charge as many devices as possible. So what I've done is obviously I have bought a 60 watt solar panel which is fully weatherproof and waterproof. I have the rather large and heavy leisure battery which um, is 110 amps so it's quite a big one. I have also got the charge regulator which um, makes sure everything doesn't basically blow up. And the last thing I bought was the inverter. Now the inverter basically takes the, um, the DC current, the direct current, and changes it to the AC current, which allows me to use this plug socket to plug in pretty much anything I want. Well, I say anything I want, this is rated at a 2000 watt um, inverter, so it's anything under 2000 watts that I can plug in. I think if I plug in anything bigger, then we could be in trouble. So, the cost for all this was around £572 for everything. Now, you can buy ready-made kits, um, and I have seen um, the same kits come for over £1,000. So the whole idea of this blog, the videos, the websites, everything, is to try and do all this as cheap as possible. So what I've actually done is they've all been bought from the same company, which was um, Sunshine Solar. So I think you can... Um, find them on the website of www.sunshinesolar.co.uk Now, they've been very helpful, um, sent them lots of emails, got lots of responses back off them and very quick um, and they advised me on what to buy, um, knowing what I wanted to do. So thanks to them and thanks to Mike who was um, answering all my emails, so I've obviously this all turned up this morning. Now, all I've literally done this morning is added the um, the stand for the solar panel. So you can obviously see these just over here. Um, all it was was four bits of metal, a few bolts, put them together and it basically produces the stand. Now it's got the stand because it's not going to be mounted to anything. Um, luckily, I, luckily the garden here is quite big so we can leave it out in the garden um, rather than having to mount it on a roof. But you can also get the roof mounts for these as well. So don't worry if you haven't got any space all you've got to do is buy the roof mount and you can mount it straight on the roof. So connecting it, um, I've, I haven't really looked at all of this properly, but the whole idea is it's very, very straightforward. Now, this is the cable which comes direct from the solar panel. Now the whole idea will be this will connect into this one uh, on the charge regulator. Um, from there you will have uh, which one is it? this one which will connect there and that connects direct to the battery. Um, from that point there is a spare one as well I might add that if you wanted to connect anything direct it can also connect um, something direct to the charge regulator but I think it's for the smaller products anyway, lights as, and such. Um, from there once this is obviously powering um, the battery then what we do is we have a couple more cables that came with the inverter. Um, as you can see these are already set up to be connected. So it will literally just be a case of red is obviously positive. So we have one end connected to the battery uh, and we're going to have the other end connected to the back of the inverter. So as you can see here we just have simple twist on twist off connectors. And literally that is it. That is the only setup this is going to need today. Um, I have ordered a battery box for the battery. Um, whole idea is it's completely waterproof. So if the battery is going to stay outside or it's going to stay in the shed, then that's protected from the elements. Um, that is quite important. And the other thing extra I've bought was an extension cable. Now this could be pretty much used for extending the cable from the panel to the battery or from um, you know the battery to the 
to the regulator. So it, it depend it's it's all dependent on distance obviously in your house. Um I would probably advise to measure up because I haven't and I don't think I'm gonna have enough cable but I will set it up, I will show it working um, and I can worry about the uh, extra cables that I'll probably need at another time. So what I'm going to do now um, is I'm literally, um, it's absolutely chucking it down outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this out of the back door um, and just let the cable come in and from there what we can do is you can physically watch me connecting the cables because there's nothing else to do with it um, and then I'll connect everything to the battery um, and then from there that's it. It should in theory start working and start charging. So what I'll do is I'll take this outside and then we'll start connecting up the cables. So here we are. The solar panel is sitting outside in the cold wet rain and I'm staying inside where it's nice and warm. So I've obviously took out the solar charge regulator out of its packaging and very simple. Um, this middle one here is for the solar panel and there's the cable for the solar panel that's just coming in through the door so very simply we will just attach it and squeeze it in and I don't know if you can see but the charge light has came on straight away so we know that the solar panel is working it's going to be doing its job so the battery we'll basically take these off we've got the connectors for the power inverter we have the clips now these are the clips that are going to attach to the solar regulator and these are the crocodile clips which will then attach to the battery so we will simply connect them on obviously always make sure that black is negative like so and red is positive so they have now connected to it. I know you can't quite see it, but I have connected them. It wasn't difficult. And then we'll plug in the solar panel. Now, in theory, the light is on for charging. There's no indication light on uh, the battery I've got itself. Um, there's an indication to say if it's in good condition, needs charging, or battery needs replacing. Now, at the minute, obviously, it's just blank because it needs charging. So. That will probably take quite a few hours to charge up, uh, well at least to be fully charged. Now on the other side of things, which is the load, we don't really need to put anything on there like I said. That is specifically to attach things directly. So if you're running something direct off the solar panel, um, you can connect it, or you should connect this obviously to the charge regulator first um, to make sure it's regulating the amount of power that the device is using. For what I'm doing, um, basically once that's hooked up and the battery is um, charging, we don't need to do anything more with that. Now, oh, we'll move the battery around, which is not very light. Right, I've just pulled it out a bit. Then you can see we've got red, um, positive, black, negative, both just sitting on there charging this battery up. So from this point, what we're going to be needing to do is Oh, get a pair of scissors first. I'll get a pair of scissors. Right, I have a pair of scissors. So, I'm just going to carefully open these out. Now, again, all we've got there black negative cable, red positive cable. Now what I will do, obviously, is I'll take any charge off that whilst I'm putting these on. Now the, the set I bought, has already, that's already been obviously soldered up with um, an eyelet um, and I can connect it straight over because the, the way the battery is designed we've got um, the larger bolt or we've got a, a small screw on bolt which you can attach things to. So what I can do attach these very easily it always helps if the when you buy these products you obviously always come with nuts and bolts and screws always helps to keep them handy otherwise like me you end up getting up and down numerous times you know to find where on earth you've put them and then you just can't seem to find them
Okay, so I eventually found the few bits I was actually looking for, which was a bit silly. Um, very standard washers and bolts. So what we do is we put one washer on, um, put the cable on, another washer on top to make sure a nice clean connection. And put this on. So that's the positive done. Negative going on now. Now, right, done. The, I obviously haven't secured them on fully, but for all intents and purposes at the minute, we're just basically setting it up to make sure everything works. Now, these are obviously going to connect straight to the inverter. So, it's very simple. These just will screw off, just like so. There's your positive, there's your negative, and very simply, positive can go on and we screw it. Make sure it's fairly tight to get a nice clean connection. And negative, and screw that on. Just like so. So, the basic design, the battery is now hooked up to the inverter. So when the battery is fully charged, um, I will basically be able to plug in general household devices like my mobile phone into here, um, maybe the, the tablet I own, the laptop, anything. Anything running under 2000 watts is the whole idea or is what I'll be testing. So for example, um, my lawnmower I think runs at 1400 watts. So the theory behind it is I can plug the lawnmower direct into this inverter and it will run off the battery which is obviously being charged by the solar panel, thus saving money. Um, other than that, there's absolutely... Uh, silly mate, I have forgot if I really wanted to show this fully working to reconnect the crocodile clips. And that's it. Um, like I said, that'll probably take a, probably a good maybe 5-10 hours to charge, if not longer, because it is quite a big battery. Once it's fully charged though, then the whole idea is that I'll be able to plug in anything to the inverter, I'll be able to run it or charge it, and that's it all done. So what I'm going to do is I'm obviously just going to leave everything charging. Um, I'll probably tidy things up a little bit because it doesn't take very long to disassemble. Um, and in the next video I'll be doing, um, when the battery's fully charged of course, what we'll be doing is I'll be trying various devices. Um, we'll see exactly what we can run off a 60 watt solar panel and a 110 amp battery. So, thank you.